the sales for changes cloud okay all right welcome back everybody it's been a couple of weeks um last time we went through music theory we went through a whole bunch of different scenes and like different kinds of concepts it was more targeted towards everyone in the video game industry who either wanted to make music or perhaps wanted to communicate with musicians um but this time this this time is a little bit more towards composers and sound designers or people who want to compose in sound design. Um, it's more focused on tools. So I'm gonna give you some tools that you can use to, um, to compose or to sound design essentially. It's like DAWs or digital audio stations, um, virtual instruments, stuff like that. Uh, so let's get started. Let me just start sharing my screen. I always forget where that is. There we go. All right, desktop. I'm just going to admit some people here. Share sound. And do you see my desktop by any chance? I have to put the chat. Okay. All right. Can you just y'all let me confirm that you can see my desktop? Everything's okay? Yes, everything's good. Cool. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. So, Welcome to Video Game Music Course. This time we'll be more speaking about a music that tells a story it's instead of just music in general, right? And music that has a concept, that has context, and it wants to tell you something. And usually that accompanies a visual or in this case, a game, right? Cool. So syllabus, I hate that word, but for lack of term, uh, role of music and sound design in games. Why is it important? How does it move? How does it work? the basic stuff, general digital uh, audio workstation, which is we call DAWs, what they are. I have a free one that for both PC and Mac that you can both use. Uh, it's honestly pretty impressive. Uh, virtual instruments, VSTs, some free ones as well. I have some recommendations if you guys want to mess around with them. And finally, how to like composing and music for platformer games and a bit of sound design and some very basic integration, right? And we're gonna be using the game that you saw with Foof and, um, and Ashraf, uh, the one little platformer, little person. I thought it was a spaceman, it turns out it's just a human. Um, so yeah, we're gonna work on that game. Cool, cool. All right, first things first, what is audio? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. What is the role of audio in video games? Why do we need it? What's the point of it? In my spaceman, yes, the spaceman, I think it's my little bubble. That's what I thought. So what's the role of audio in video games? Um, in my opinion, music, audio, that like dialogue, like sound effects, all that kind of stuff, and storytelling are all equally important. They're all spaced out to tell the same story, right? So one thing is they can enhance the overall experience. That makes sense, right? So if you have the whole game and it's all quiet, I don't know about you, but I'll, I'll get bored in like two seconds. Right, like my 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 eyes are pleased, but what about my ears? I won't be very happy. <laughs> so that's one thing. The other is they can offer context to the player. Think of uh, Call of Duty, for example. Whenever you have you're shooting around, and like your gun, for example, is lacking, and like it's like it's not clipping auditively, you can tell, or like people around you, you can hear them. It gives you context of your surrounding, gives context of what's happening as the player. It can be very very useful. Excuse me, important people. Fine. They can also help the player fully immerse themselves into the world. Have you ever played, for example, uh, Limbo or uh, Inside? The world itself, like the game itself, has barely any music to almost no music. It's only sound design and uh, sound effects, but it's so well made that immediately you're just transported into that world of Limbo. And then you are that little boy or little girl just walking around, that child walking and running around. It's crazy. With Little Nightmares. I think Little Nightmares did a really good job with that too. Um, they can make your experience more stressful, relaxing, aka Limbo, for example. I don't know about you, but that stresses me out so much. Uh, relaxing. There's a lot of the relaxing games with the music and um, the sound effects are just relaxing and it just helps you just mellow out. It's really fun. Limbo soundtrack and listen to it casually. That too, because again, like it's sometimes the music can be so relaxing in a way, but put it in a context where the story is not relaxing and it works really well, right? A lot of horror games or hollow horror films, sometimes instead of having that big brassy sound, they have very quiet, very mellow sounds, music that if you put it on by itself, it's very nice. But 
put it in the context of a horror game and you can get yourself a good game. So yeah, and finally, they can make you feel all sorts of emotions. They can make you happy, they can make you sad, they can make you angry. I don't know if anyone played Red Dead Redemption 2. I cry every single time. Um, the music in that game is phenomenal. Like they actually have singers and everything and it just makes me cry every single time. Beautiful, all the music is just fantastic, exquisite. <laughs> so Doom, Doom, oh, you're a heavy metal fan, that's for sure. <laughs> Doom definitely has a really good uh, soundtrack. And I think in, um, in, in another, another workshop last couple of weeks, someone mentioned, um, but, uh, Brutal Legend, sorry, one of my favorite games of all time with Jack Black, that game has definitely some amazing, they use more soundtracks, like actual songs. And, um, oh, it was your Hisham, okay, yeah. Beautiful game, like, and also the soundtrack, the actual like guitars and everything is so beautiful. I'm gonna use it beautiful a lot, this. This is my, this is my word for the day. All right. So what are the different kinds of audio, right? We have sound effects, you know, folly, you have people footsteps, you have enemy sounds, all that kind of, all that kind of shebang. You have music, obviously. You have dialogue. You know, you have voiceovers. You have ambience. You know, the trees, the birds, the lava for some reason, all that kind of stuff. And you have UI sound effects. You know, like you know, you have the little menu, ding, 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 that kind of stuff. And there's more things that you can narrow down, but overall, these will be the general thingies, the general englobements. So. Am I going too fast? Let me know if I'm going too fast, by the way. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. We're a smaller team today, I think, so there's no problem with that. Uh, not too fast? Good to know. All right. So music and video games. Music and video games traditionally have two ways of moving. And what I mean by moving is the difference between music and films and music and video games is one is linear, which is the films. It just You can't really change it. It just does what it does. But in video games, technically speaking, the, 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 the player is the one choosing what music they want to hear. You know, like the music changes, it morphs into different music, different types, just to be able to, to adapt to what's happening on the screen, right? Because again, a player has agency, they can choose where they want to go. So the music will have to follow those decisions. So the two main ways the music will move is vertically, uh, which is going to be like a vertical layering. So it's going to stack things up together and then you can just remove and add some as you go. Oh, I'm just going to add this person. There we go. And it can also move horizontally, which means that, you know, you have example, and I'm going to show more examples here, actually. This might be better visual. I'm a more visual person. So horizontal would be something like this. You have exploration music, and then suddenly person comes, hits you in the head, battle music, right? And it's very, the percussion comes and, you feel the, the vibe, you feel like a bit more the, the, the intensity. And even then that could be something they can even enhance and adapt in the battle music itself. I don't know if that made sense, but it does. <laughs> and then after the battle's gone, maybe a few seconds later, it kind of goes maybe to silence, to ambience, right? It can, it can go something completely different. And notice how these arrows point both ways. Like it's not just one way, it's not linear. You can go battle music to exploration music, you go from silence to battle music. Right? Hey, Majid, no, you didn't really miss a lot. So if you want me to recap, it's pretty simple. Uh, I'm just kind of showing you the basics of music and audio and video games. Um, essentially, I'm going through, like, for example, the different kinds, sound effects, music, dialogue, ambience, UI. And we, we spoke a bit of video games, the kind of cool, beautiful music we have, the roles they have, you know, they make the experience better. Um, they can make you feel emotions, they can enhance, give you context, all that stuff. Cool? Cool. And I was also saying that in music, you can music uh, in video games moves either vertically or horizontally, or horizontally or vertically. And I'm kind of getting to this. So cool. Horizontal resequencing, as I said, it doesn't move just one way. If you have exploration and a person comes, hits you, boom, battle music. But you can easily be in the midst of battle and then suddenly it goes away and then exploration music instead of sounds of ambience. So it's not just one way. You can go whichever direction it wants. Awesome. Vertical layering. Vertical layering is probably my, there's no such thing as a favorite method, but I really do enjoy it a lot. Me because of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Redemption. If you guys play this game, you'll, you'll know why. 
So imagine you have a bass line, for example, and then the music is just a standard bass. You're, you're walking around and then suddenly someone spots you and there's a little drums that kick in, right? That's track two, for example. The bass doesn't go anywhere. It stays where it is, but then the drums kick in, right? And it keeps going. And then slowly more enemies show up, right? And then you have horses, you have caravans, you have all that kind of stuff. And then track three comes in, which might be just like strings going do 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 and in that case, it can really just enhance the experience. And it goes both ways yet again. You can remove tracks, you can add tracks. It depends. And the best example for this is Red Dead Redemption 2, I believe. Um, yeah, Transitor, I, I, don't know, I don't know the game, but I'm sure with the humming, well, that's pretty cool. That must be cool with like the humming and then oh, that's pretty cool. I like it. But it stacks, right? It's like multiple stacks. And you can just remove, add, subtract, add, and as it goes forward, right? Um, I have an example if you guys want. Let me just check. Do, do, do. Let me go on my little thingy. All right, so I'm just gonna go to layering demonstration. And I'm just gonna have to ask you to let me know if you see the new window with the audio stuff. Okay, perfect. Awesome, good to know. And let me know if you hear this, okay? Hey guys, for those who don't know, or for those who actually attended the session, um, there was actually a lot of complications with the music. So overall, this is the track. Uh, so we have, the whole point is that every single one of these should be able to work with each other, no matter what, right? So violins with bass, bass with percussion, whatever it is, it should work, all right? So let's take a listen and we'll play around and see if it works. Okay, so as you can see, all these tracks work well with each other, and that's the point of vertical layering, right? Is you can subtract and add as you want. So we let's move on. Let's just say to you right now. So that's vertical layering. Sweet. And oh, I think I copy paste twice. Amazing. So at this point, we can either take a break now or we can take it a little later. Um, completely up to you. But next we're gonna be looking at digital audio workstations and some virtual instruments and a bit of integration. So do you guys want to take a break now? We want to wait a bit and then we'll do it. Y'all feeling good? We can just keep going, you know? I got no problem. I say go on. All right, cool. I May mean, it's fair. Okay. Then digital audio workstations, DAWs. For some of you who recorded, I think Yaka, last time you mentioned GarageBand, um, that is a DAW, for example. Da, that is what a doll. I just like saying doll. I don't know why. Anyways, I'll stop saying doll. So, what are DAWs? That's the right way you're supposed to say it, I think. Um, so, it's a software musicians, producers, sound designers, and many others use to record audio, record MIDI, which is virtual instruments. Uh, they can edit music and audio. They can mix and master, and basically, it's just a software you can create with. It's it's like a a sandbox that you can use to. Do, do stuff. Nope. Hello. 
fellow human. Okay. So we have tries one 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 doll I found that is 3D goods, and I was actually pretty impressed, and is for both Mac and PC. So I ain't gonna discriminate against the PC people. Is uh, track is waveform from traction. So I'm just gonna show you where to find it. I don't know if you guys see it. I was trying to find some good definitions here. So traction waveform. It's completely free. You have different versions. Uh, this one, you have a free version, you have a paid version. Honestly, the free version is fantastic. I don't see any reasons to go to be paid for unless you really want to get more into the world. Um, the weirdest part is they even have like for like like every single software that Mac, Windows, and even have for Linux. Like it's really just overall included, inclusive. Um, so yeah, you just go here. You can download it for free, free download right here. And you get Waveform. Who has Linux? I have no idea. I've never heard of Linux until like, actually I always did, but never met a person who has a Linux, but that's me. Um, so yeah, so you can just go, if you want, you can try it out, free download. The only thing is sometimes not all Waveform, like not all the compatibilities are there, but for the most part, it's great. So let me show you a bit how it works. These are all my thingies. There we go. And I'm gonna ask you again to let me know if you see the new windows. We can see, perfect, thank you. Adam. All right. We see, so once you open Waveform, you have this little page right here, which is your intro page. The best part, you have templates. If you guys have an idea of what you wanna do, you have band recording, house recording, podcast, singer, songwriter, all that kind of stuff. So you can have a bit of a template that can just give you a bit of, of help. Uh, you can choose your scheme, your sheen. You have light, you can choose your color palette. I like dark, that's how I am. You can change your, this is the up, this is important. Go back to dark, please. Thank you, Yara. Of course, go back to dark, always. It's elite, that's what it is. So uh, audio settings are important. So you wanna make sure that the speakers are there or if you have monitors that it's there, this is what you wanna choose. Uh, mic back microphone. Um, sorry, whoever has the mic on, if you don't mind just turning muting yourself, just so that we don't bother everyone else. Thank you. And input. I have my normal microphone. You can choose what microphone you want. And yeah, that's basically it. You have the sample rate, audio buffer size, all in front of you. And what's kind of strange with this dot that doesn't have another side, everything is in front of you right here. Like all your tabs are already open. It's almost like a browser. It's pretty cool. So imagine you just open the DAW, you're just like, all right, I wanna start creating. You choose one of those templates or you have a new project right here. Oh, my mouse gets bigger, look at that. So you press new projects. I'm gonna call it uh, Matata. Ooh, I don't know why, there we go. Potatoes and meat. All right, so beautiful. Then you just like create a project. And there you go, you have a few tracks right here, ready to go. Now, when you start getting this, it might be a little confusing. It might be a lot of stuff altogether. And if that gets a bit overwhelming, like I get overwhelmed easily too. So there's an eye right here. Just click on that eye on the top right. And you can remove and add whatever window you want. So I don't want that window right here. So I'm gonna remove it. If you don't want that window down here, you can remove it. Right. If you want the piano and then the, the MIDI input, you can put this in. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I think they did a good job with this. And I'll just bring this back for now. And then you can have like more options here. I'm going to move this. There we go. So I'm going to go back to this, how it was originally. So as overwhelming as it might be, it'll get simple the more you use it. These are tracks. I'm sure like it says right here, and you can see the thing going up and down as I'm talking. It's because it's right now the input is my microphone. And the cool thing about this is you can choose if you want to be audio, if you want to make it MIDI. All right. So over here, we have uh, presets, racks, and it comes with a bunch of like uh, choruses, delays, compressions, a bunch of uh, audio design, audio effects, which is pretty cool. The only thing that it doesn't come with is instruments but I got you covered. Do not worry, do not fret. 
So this is basically the overall thing. So let's say I want to record. Let me just remove this right here. I want I have this red button here and red button here. I'm gonna click on this. And I'm gonna click on this. Test, 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 test. Excuse my voice. I know how beautiful it is. It's a joke. So now if you want to play it back. Test, 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 test. A little loud and not very great. Beautiful. Done. See how great that was? How easy it is. And if you have a piano, if you have a guitar, just bring, if you have a, an iPhone, just bring it to your guitar or, or thing. Mika, make a song out of this. Test, 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 test. Every time I have a weird audio thing, Ashraf will come to me and says, make a song out of it. And I tend to. Matata lives on the heart of men. Jesus, this is this is poetry. Yeah, oh my God. Okay. Why my valves came out like this? Anyways, so does that make sense so far? Is it self-explanatory, pretty, pretty in, in, in uh, pretty easy to use so far? Is a book code, sir? Ah, let me know what book it is in the comments and I'll check it out. So we have a few tracks you can choose. And if you ever want to add a track, you have a little plus button right here. You can say add track. And then there you go, your track nine. And obviously you can see they're all color schemes. So what you can do is I don't want to be, I don't want it to call track one. If you right click, you can rename the track. I'm gonna call this violins one, right? I can also change the color right here. I want this to be purple, right? Easy, pretty easy stuff. So if you want to record your voice, if you want to record your piano, guitar, just you have your tracks right there. But what if you want to record something else? What if you want to record virtual instruments? Purple squad. Oh, I think that's okay. Thank you. Good to know. Oh, purple squad. Oh, you meant the actual purple squad. Of course, purple squad. Best color in the world. Easily. All right. So track two, track three, track four. So what if you want to record MIDI? All right. Um, in that case, we have to decide. Do you we know what MIDI is? If you don't know what MIDI is, I got you also covered. I'm gonna go back to my little buddy right here. Oh no, that's not what I want to do. So what are virtual instruments? That's our first question. Virtual instruments are plugins that people use, composers, producers use to replicate the sound of a specific instrument. Okay. So I have a few free VSTs for you to use that you can download. A lot of them are from Spitfire and Orchestral Tools. Those are uh, two different companies. And let me just show you where to find them. This is just for uh, for your future references if you want to mess around with it. All right, let's say Spitfire. Spitfire Audio. You go on the website. And they have two main big plugins, right? On the one hand, they have, uh, if you go on the search bar and you say BBC, and then you have a whole different kinds of BBC, the one we want is this cover. So it's a symphony orchestra, this cover. Now folks, this is a entire orchestra at your disposal that you can use for free, literally for free. Mom. Right. All right, Romel, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna have to mute, okay? Just so we don't, don't bother anyone else. No, oh, perfect, already done, thank you. <laughs> All right, awesome. Uh, so so this is the BBC ad myself. <laughs> life is life, sometimes I forget. I forget to unmute myself too, mute myself too. So this is the Discover page. You just go in and because I already own it, I don't have this, you can just download it or buy it but it's going to be free and this again this is an entire orchestra at your disposal you can go ahead you have the violins you have the the horns you have the, the flutes you have whatever you want and i'll show you more into it later basically this is one option another option they have if you want to be more experimental is if you go here and you click labs i'm just gonna research it products there we go the labs are all free plugins that you can use. And it's very synthy sometimes. It's a little more experimental. It's really cool. It's a, you can do a lot with it if you really want to. Next step is orchestral tools. This is a different company. They also 
Well, there are very different ones. The first one, the BBC uh, Symphony uh, Discover is an orchestra. So it's really just a professionally recorded orchestra. Uh, so if you want to mess with like orchestral sounds, go with the BBC. If you want more experimental, you have some synths, you have some weird guitar, some moon guitars, that kind of stuff, go with the labs. I would argue both because they're not the same at all. Like they're very different things, uh, which is a bit like this too. You have something here in orchestral tools. And I think it's called uh, Sign Factory. I'm just going to Google it. There we go. Let me just find it. For the, oh, free instruments. There we go. Free instruments. In the free instruments, it's called Sign Factory. You have, again, a whole bunch. This is similar to the labs we saw with Spitfire. It's a whole bunch of little instruments that you can use. You know, you have electric basses, tonal organs, flutes, voices. Uh, electric pianos, free drums and percussion, again, like a whole bunch of stuff, acoustic guitars, church organs. It's completely crazy how they're just giving you this free. Um, and one thing that is pretty cool is called layers. Oh, sorry about that. All right. So layers is also an orchestral uh, virtual instrument. The only difference between this and the other one is the other one, like the DD that would spit fire one, you can choose what instrument you want. You have violins, you have flutes, you have horns, and you can kind of mess around with this. Layers is different. It's really just the brass section, the flutes, the wind, the woodwind section, the string section, and you can only play chords with it. You can't play individual notes. It's gonna have like if you play an F, it's gonna play F major, F minor, or whatever chord you want to choose. But a chord, not a and it voices it automatically. So what I can do is I can just show you a bit how they both look, they all look like. So that's for for uh, that's it for the slide for now. Uh, I'm just gonna minimize you. So this is where we were with waveform. Over here, I'm just gonna reduce the page right here. There we go. Over here on the right, you have a little plus button, right? You're just gonna want to press this. And if you want to download, in case you guys need help with downloading, um, you have interfaces for you to download for the instruments. For Spitfire is uh, Spitfire Audio. And then over here, you can just download you know, updates. You have the labs, the one I talked about. You can download whichever you want. It's over here, you can download everything. Uh, CSGO, I haven't been in a while, but I love it. And for orchestral tools, it's called the Sign Player. And over here you have, you know, all your your well, your libraries, right? So that's how you download them for now. Over here on the waveform, you can just press the X, the plus right here. And I want to choose, let's say I want to go with Brita the DC right now. Uh Spitfire, Spitfire, there you go. Spitfire audio. I have both labs and DDC. Let's say I want to Spitfire. I want. And over here is going to ask you what kind of instance for now. You can just do a single plugin. You don't want to mess around with the try with the with all the shebangs. <laughs> and this is for I want this cover. So this is what you're going to see. You have a piano that comes with it. You have the violins, the violas, cello, basses, horns, trumpets, tenor, bass, tenor, trombones, tuba, flutes, oboes, clarinet, bassoons, literally percussions, whatever you want. It's there, right? It's there for your taking. If you want to hear it out, again, let me know if you can hear it. Hold on, I can't even hear it. Hey everyone, me again. So again, music, uh, sound, we have some sound technical issues. So this is waveform. I'm just going to go back to what I was showing you before. I'm just loading up the plugin. So this is BBC. I'm just going to go to the actual discover, which is what you have. Go back to violin one. So it's going to sound something like this. I mean, for a free plugin, it sounds fantastic. You also have cellos. Mm -hmm. 
we can't forget the horns, which most of you will know the instrument from a specific video game. I'm 100% sure all of you got the video game. And it sounds fantastic, it really does sound fantastic. We have some flutes if you want to mess with that. Beautiful flutes. We also have some harps in Celeste. We also have the Celeste, which is like a small piano. But I think most of you will recognize it from another piece. Clearly, I had to remind myself how to play this one, but overall, that's it, right? You have even percussion, which is really cool. You have timpanies. You also have things like tubular bells, which is something I always love to include. And I think only a few weeks ago, they, re they released their piano, so that's very new. So yeah, that's the gist of the BBC Discover. There is also, I believe, I showed you guys orchestral tools. So if you want to remove a plugin, just Right click, right now I'm not right clicking, just right click and put delete plugin. There we go. Now add again. We're gonna go orchestral tools if I can find it. All right, there it is. Sign player, which is gonna be where all your plugins are. Now I have things you probably don't have, uh, but right here I have layers. And let me show you how it's done. So for sign, for layers, it's really just chords. As you can see, you can obviously mess around with it, uh, stack two chords together. But yeah, it's, it's a really cool tool to use. Uh, another thing I also wanted to show you is also from Spitfire, it's called Labs, which is also all free. It's a whole bunch of things I installed. Now you have things like, um, like shorts, you have synths, you even have things like violin and, and cellos, and they're more experimental. But I believe one of my favorites of all time is definitely, I have it saved here, which is the music box. So 
So yeah, that was basically the plugins you can mess around with, and please do, it sounds great. So what I did is I just composed a little music with all the plugins I showed you. So they're all included here. I'm just gonna lower this here. And yeah, this is just a very quick thing, so you can see how it sounds like. I mean, this is just to show you what you're capable of doing. It's all free sound, so please go ahead, create something cool, experiment. And yeah, that's that's really just it. So, pass Mika, take it away. So this is waveform, um, simple stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead, discard changes. Now let's talk about video games. It's been a while, we haven't talked about video games yet. So, for the platformer game, uh, we have, Let's open the sound effects. I don't have much hope, but we're going to see if we can hear anything with logic at least. Logic is a bit more powerful, so we shall see if we have some chances. At the same time, we have, and if you guys don't remember, this is the game. Can you guys see the Unity? I know I keep asking for if you can see stuff, but I'm just making sure. All right, awesome. All right, so we all know the game. Oh, you can't see the screen, uh, Yara? See, not here. Oh, you can see. Perfect. Okay, awesome. So we have, um, no, no, I'm just saying see for now. You have start, you have exit. It's a beautiful game that they did. I thought those were little robot people, little robot things, but it turns out they're beetles. I did not read the prefabs. And it's a simple game. It's a little platformer. It shoots stuff. It's a uh, little... Oh, I got injured. I don't know how to play games, clearly. Got a chaser, and it's, it's a simple game, right? It's straightforward. No, I am trapped. What shall I do? And I can't die because I have both scenes open. I am stuck in endless suffering. What should do? I'm just going to stop playing it. There you go. Simple game, right? And let me, and I have here a few sound designs. I did a few sound stuff. I have the buttons, so the UI hover, so whenever you're over the thing, I have the start button, the player shooting, the enemy move, uh, enemy death, player hurt, player death, footsteps, jump, and land. Now, because the game is not complete, a lot of these audio things won't be able to work with the game because it needs more coding. Uh, I recorded most of those. I think I recorded all of them, except I used, I think, one or two audio. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I'm hopeful, guys. I'm very hopeful. I'm a bit too optimistic in life. Um, let's say output. I want to screen record with. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna keep it to this. I'm uh, go back to Zoom. Just want to make sure you guys at least hear something. I don't want you to come out of this like bland, you know. Um, same as system. Okay, all right. Can you guys hear anything at all? Like, let me just. Yeah, okay, there we go. We have something, we have some sounds, guys. I'm happy, I'm proud. So, barely. All right, let me just raise the volume and see if that helps. So, this is the hover button. I mixed it with. I'm happy that you're happy. Thank you. A lot, a lot, right? The two, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so I use those two plugins, which are found already. If um, people have GarageBand, you're surrounded with free stuff. Unfortunately, we're privileged that way. This is uh, Logic. It's like an advanced version of, of GarageBand. So I use this sound with this sound. And I got this. 
No, I don't want to mute you. Pretty simple stuff. So far, I just used two synthesizers and there we go. We're all happy for it, right? Button start, same thing, exact same thing. I just use different chords. And it's very important, whenever you're doing UI, you don't want to experiment too far. If you're doing a certain sound, stick to those sounds and just morph them in some ways, right? Uh, yeah, I created those. I just used two synths and I just kind of combined them and there we go, we have that, that sound effect. Uh, it's really easy, like you just experiment and you're good to go, right? So don't go too far, like if you have like a, the hover is like a little stick, like a wood stick, don't make the start like a giant a thunder or something. Well, you can, but the whole point is try to stick to one environment, right? It's the same instruments. I just changed the sounds a little bit and I just kind of did different notes. For here, I just literally did a F major, if you guys remember the theory last time, an F major chord. And I combined it with this. And there we go. You got the, the start of the button. And there we go, done. Obviously, I have shoots, which I combine with some laser sounds and stuff like that. Oh, that, that's not what I want. Why no here? I don't know why. Something's wrong with it, maybe. Uh, maybe not. All right. Either ways, you guys tell me you can't really hear much. Uh, let me see if enemy player hurts. A simple. <clears throat> And then you just pitch bend a little bit, and there we go. That's simple audio. Ugh. I mean, when you're hurt, you know you don't. <clears throat> what is life? That is it, right? That is for the player hurts. Uh, player death is a little loud. I'm just gonna. It's uh, not my favorite, but it is what it is. This era is not me. This is actually I had to take it from an actual free library. I used um. Soundly, it's an app you can use with free stuff that you can use. And I just changed it. I, I added some pitch, I, I reduced it, and I chose a specific part of it. Footsteps, player jump, player land. And all these are not me because I don't have grass near me, unfortunately. So I had to take some grass, uh, use some grunts, that kind of stuff. Cool. Cool. And it's nice to organize yourself. And one thing that's very important is whenever you do sound design, uh, where's my Excel? There we go. Is to organize yourself. And this is a very small game. It has like, what, like five, six different kinds of sound effects. Um, where is it? Platform. There we go. So what could be very helpful to you is to know them down, right? So I have the sound effects typed here, player footsteps, player shoot, player jump, player hurt, all that kind of stuff. What kind of sound I'm seeing, sound effects ID. So I think grass, laser ask, short, normal, owl. Like just words that come to me of what I think is gonna work for that specific sound. And the status, is it still in process? Is it done? Well, check. Just a very simple stuff. Obviously you can go way bigger once you do like way bigger games, but this is a very small game and here we go. Cool, cool. All right, and I also did a, uh, don't say it for now. Quick music. I thought it was more of a Western. I don't know why. I thought it was like a, like a space Western. So I kind of went in that direction a little bit um instead of more fantasy i'll just wait for this to open but essentially i have them all right here i already put them all in unity if you guys don't know how i'll show you but right now we're just gonna focus on if you guys want actually we can take a little break i think we're almost done anyways i just have to show you how to integrate those things but if you guys want we can take a small break come back go on all right cool good to know Anyone else agree with me? My laptop is gonna die and can't charge my laptop right now, so I can see much. Sounds good. Nice, thank you for coming, Yaro. If you guys are still good to go, if you can just finish it up with like some sound design, how to interact it, and there we go, color day. So if you guys are still standing strong, let's do that. All right, and this is the music I did. I don't think- Hello, once again, me from the future. Uh, we also have some technicalities here, so I'm just gonna go through this again. So for this track, I just went through some acoustic guitars, some jaw harps, some uh, ocarinas, some whistles, anything to make it a little Western. And so this is the track itself, the whole track. And I'm showing you later a bit how to loop it perfectly. Uh, but for now, let's just take a listen.
And there we go. That's the track for the game. So making a, a platformer music can be very simple, but it's the whole point is that it's going to loop, right? So it's, it's, the whole point is it's going to loop over and over again. So make it somewhat interesting. I have uh, 23, 24 bars here of music. You can make it to nine if you want. You don't have to make it long. It's just going to have to loop over and over again. So one fine way of making sure this might be a bit more advanced for some people is you can cut out, let's say three bars. You can cut like all of those out, put them in the, I'll show you actually, I think it's easier if I show you. So I'm just gonna split. So now I have this, 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 this. This is like an endless, uh, a good way to loop things. So I got all the beginnings. I'm just gonna copy them towards the end. Make sure they're right, perfect. I don't know if you guys are following through, but this is it. So I took the beginning, I copied it to the end. That way, whenever I'm going to bounce it, so I'm gonna export it, I'm gonna put desktop game music. Over here, I'm just gonna add two audio tracks. This might be a bit complicated. If not, don't worry about it. Just reach out to me and I'll help you with it. I'm just gonna add it right here. So I just took the, what we just bounced, we just exported all of those with the endings. And I just uh, put it back here, right? My brain is not braining. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit more advanced because we're doing more editing here. So don't worry about it. Don't think about it too much. Just take your, take your brain for a relaxing phase. You can zone out for a second if you want. But overall, it's just showing you how to make an endless, like a, a seeming loop. So it doesn't feel like it's looping too hard. Essentially, what we did is we took the beginning of these uh, tracks. I copied them to the end. So that way, the overall track here starts like normal. And then when we get to here, it loops again because we just copied the beginning. Make it begin the same way and basically, in sense where this part right here, because this is where we cut it, this is the beginning. I'm gonna transfer this to here, right? So this is a new audio, I just put it here. I'm gonna take the beginning. The reason we're doing this is because if you have reverb, uh, delay, stuff like that, it will carry through and it might give you a pop. We don't want that, right? So let's say around here, uh, I'm gonna just trim it. And over here we have in the settings, this is more of a logic thing. Let's see, okay. So I'm gonna take this ending, I'm gonna place it towards the beginning and it should give us an endless loop. Again, don't think about it too hard. This might be a bit more complex, but overall, once we reach the ending, It starts off with this part and then continues on, if that makes sense in any way. If not, don't worry, just reach out to me and I'll explain it in a better uh, circumstance and better context. But this is the music. I'm just going to bounce it and put it in the actual folder. That way we can get into Unity. Where's Unity? I want you to replace you. There we go. Enough with logic for today. So over here in my thing, we have the actual game. In my folder, we have the actual game. We got the music. We got the sound effects. All right. Let's go to Unity. This is not the right Unity. There's so many Unities, people. Okay, there we go. So this is the game, right? This is the game you guys are all familiar with. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, you have the prefab, scenes, that kind of stuff. I made a new folder here. I just went to assets. I went to create and folder an audio one where all the um, sound effects are gonna be and all the music, I didn't add the music yet. So let me do that. All I did is simply, I took the folder and I drag it. Done, beautiful. So what should we do? Now we have the game, we have the audio in Unity. What shall we do? We can start with UI if you want, because if we remove this, remove the scene, 
Oh, sorry about that. I didn't. I forgot my voice. All right. So we have starts, we have exits, right? And you can tell whenever I put my mouse over it, it has a little gray area. So it show, it knows that I'm hovering over it, which could be to our benefits. And we have start, we have exit. So we don't care about the rest. Once you press start, the game starts. Fun stuff. What we can do is, I just want to make sure you guys will be able to hear it once again. I'm just going to go to do, 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 do. I think it's here in general. I think let me go to. I kind of forget where audio is. No, not here. Project settings. There we go. I go to audio. I'm just gonna make sure that the the speaker is the right one. Because if I play this, let me know if you can hear it. That's like the first thing I want to make sure. Can you hear this? Or any of those sounds? Okay, just making sure you can hear it. That's all I want to know. Uh, okay, so we have the hover button right here. We have the start button right here. Simple. What do we need? We need the main menu. Done. What else do we need? We need the buttons. Where are the buttons? We can go main menu canvas. We have start button and we have exit button, right? We want this. Let's start with the start button. All right. This is your inspector. I'm sure most of you know this way more than I do because, once again, I am not very proficient at the Unity. So I'm just start my Mac. There we go. So we have the actual button here, which is very important to us. We have the unclick, which is also important. First thing we're going to do is we're going to add an audio source. So if you go here, add component, audio source, beautiful. We don't want to, one thing we don't want to do is play on awake. Play on awake means it's going to start at the beginning and then we, uh, we don't want that. So we remove play on awake. We can make the volume less. I want to add a code. Now we go new script. I'm going to call this uh, start button. SFX, why not? And I have here a few codes. This is the specifier. There we go. Now, what it means, I won't be able to explain much, but I can kind of view the overall. I'm sure Ash and Fuad can explain a bit further what they mean. I'm just going to have to open the scripts, waiting for Visual Studio to open. If it's going to open, there we go. If it's lagging a little bit, I'm sorry. There's a lot of things happening all at once. My computer is, uh, is not that strong. In the meantime, how's everyone doing? I feel like everyone who works in the video game industry needs to get ready for this. Just the overall waiting for things to open, things crashing. I'm sure programmers and, and, and developers will definitely let you know that things will crash, things will burn. <laughs> things will take forever to open. We're experiencing it with us. You want to start learning piano? Honestly, it's a beautiful instrument. Uh, I think piano is the best instrument to start music life. Especially if you want to know theory, it's it's great. All right, that's the actual script itself. I'm just gonna do the one I have. So I called it button SFX, but I think yeah, I guess we can call it button SFX. So I called it starts button SFX. There we go. Uh, so that's the actual script itself. So we have the public voids. We have the hover sound, and I want the sound effects to play one shot hover sound. And public void SFX play one shot the the actual click sound effects. I don't know what language. Oh, I mean the actual programming language. I think uh, Unity does C sharp, right? Yeah, I think uh, Unity is C sharp. Um, essentially, what this means, from my basic basic understanding, is we're gonna let Unity help us um, choose the audio we want into the buttons, right? 
Ash, for uh, all of you who program, I apologize for the super destructive um, and, and bland explanation. But yes, I mean, code is a code. That's, a, that's, a, that's actually a lesson right here. If you actually work on a team, the best thing you can do is collaborate for two reasons. One, you don't want to mess anything up for the programmer. They worked hours and hours and days and days on something on a code. Last thing you want to do is mess around with it and destroy it for them. Secondly, it's it saves time. You have better things to do. They have better things to do. So just reach out to the programmer or developer and say, hey, listen, I want to do this. This is the code I think is going to work. What should I do? Or what do you suggest I can do? Collaborate. Talk to your programmers. Always the best thing you want to do. That's great. Because again, you don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste their time. All right. Visual Studios be gone. That's no, not going to go away. All right. So now we have the scripts. And you can see here, the star button SFX has hover and it has click. Cool. Because we added the, the public thinking, the public uh, void, I think, the public class yeah, and the public audio sources. So this will allow us to add the sounds we want into the general star button. Hey folks, we had some technical issues last time. So let me just continue. So we have here the script and the two audio, which if you go to audio here, all I did is really just drag them. Let me just go back. You just drag them into the respective, uh, respective uh, little class. And what I did here, audio source is empty, as you can tell, right? It's completely empty. And you leave it empty and obviously I removed it on awake. And all I'm gonna have to do is drag it towards where it says SFX, right? That's it, that's all you have to do. So now, on the click, which is something that for Adam and have showed you how to do, all you have to do is just add, and then you're just gonna drag the start button in that area right here. And then you just press on function, and you press start with the button, that the, the script that you said, right? And that's it, it's that easy. But that's only for, uh, for a click, what about hover? Well, first thing you wanna do is add a component. It's called event trigger. And you want to add add new event trigger. And what we want is pointer enter, which means when the mouse is over hovering. Right? And you have this little empty thing. Press on the X. Once again, drag the star button into the area. And then once we do that, we just want to go on the function. So no function. Go down to start the script and say hover sound. And it's that simple. It's really just that easy, right? And let's see if it worked. And there we go, it worked. Good for us. Now for the exit button, I just wanted to add the hover. I don't want to add a click because there's no point adding a click sound if it's just gonna close the app, right? So it's the same thing. I just drag the, the exact same thing, add your source, it's empty. I remove play on awake. I have the exact same script, but I just drag the hover sound and not the actual click sound. And yeah, let's hear that out again. And there we go, it's all working perfectly. Uh, yeah, all this through the script, it's very easy, simple script, right? So there we go. Next thing is, let's try maybe the character. All right, let's do the land. We like landing, we like the, the, the sound of jumping and stuff. So we can go to player. This is the actual player right here. We need a specific script. You know, the player has multiple scripts. We need the shooting control, we need the movement, the movement controller right here. I'm just gonna open that script. And this sound of this uh, code I'm gonna give you right now is versatile. It can use for mostly anything, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it here. I like to find the, I like this, I call this the header, the, the general header where things are that just, you know, you demanding things. So what we have is a serialized field. Uh, it's private, audio source, jump sound effect. What it means 
All I know is that it's going to give you the option to add the sound effect to the actual player movement. Okay, that's basically what it means. But we also want to tell Unity that we want to play in one shot. So one thing we want to find is the jump. So we have walk, we have flip, on move, jump. So on jump, you have the F target velocity right before or right after target velocity. We're going to write, we're going to go back here to the serialized fields. We're going to go jump sound effects, SFX, jump SFX dot play, parentheses, open, close, semicolon, save. So far, so good. Should be easy enough. Yeah, I'm going to send the codes and everything. Let me just also, I'm going to do recording, re record everything. That way, it's a bit, makes more sense. Um, that way, we know it works. I'm just going to wait for the script to save. I'm going to go back to Unity, and things are going to change around on the player. You'll notice that in the actual movements, we have jump sound effects. First thing we're going to do is audio source. This is your pillar. This is what you need. We're going to add. Go back to audio. We want the jump sound. Where's the jump sound? There we go. Player jump. We don't want it to play on awake. Let's lower the volume a bit. So now what we're going to do with this is we're going to drag the audio source into jump sound effects. There we go. Now this should work. So I'm going to, first of all, remove, I'm going to save it. Well, it should work actually without even having to. So let me see. I'm just going to press play. Sorry about that. I'm just going to take a second. So now because we added the jump sound effects, because this is what we did, right? The jump sound effects uh, inside the player movement script, we allowed it to add the sound to the actual player movement. So one way or another. There we go. Start, sorry for the little wheel of death. All right, so let's press starts. There we go. It does the sound jump. Simple stuff. And then we add the shoot. Cool. Let's add two or three more sound effects and then we can call it a day. I apologize for the uh, the whole technical difficulties, but I'll make sure you guys get what you, you deserve. <laughs> so we have the jump, great. Next, we let's do the shooting. I like shooting. We're gonna go to the same player, the player overall, like the inspector. Because there's multiple scripts, we're gonna add player movement, player control, player shooting control. There we go. We want that one. We're just gonna open that script. The exact same formula, exact, exact same thing. We're gonna go. Uh, after this, we're just going to write serialized field, private audio source. I'm going to call it shoot sound effects. Now we need on fire right here. Same thing. So now we know that there's a section where we can add the, the, the sound, but now we need to tell it to play a one shot. So we're going to go shoot SFX dot play parentheses, open close, semicolon. Same exact thing we did the jump, we just changed the name, right? So we're just gonna have, allow it to reload. And also one thing we need to do, which is very important, is to add another audio source. Because for every sound you want to implement, I'm just gonna collapse this because we don't need you. So I'm gonna add another audio source. I'm gonna call it, oh no, I can't call it anything. I'm just gonna go and find my player shoot. Oh, sorry. There we go. Player shoots, add it here. Remove, play on awake. And John, there you go. Player shooting, we're just going to drag the other source to this. All right. Now, with the power of magic and coding, you go away. There, what is it? Oh, there we go. With the magic of power and coding, because for me, coding is magic. I don't know how people are able to do this stuff. This is crazy. Kudos to everyone who builds, honestly. So I'm just going to press play, and I'm going to wait. Patiently waiting for my shooting sound effect. Hopefully, it's not too loud. We'll see. What the? There we go. Okay. 
Is everyone's uh, so far okay? Not too hectic, not too confusing? Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Maybe not coding questions, but general questions. <laughs> All right, so we have the jump. How about the shooting? We got the shooting. I don't know if you guys are able to hear it, but there's a shooting going on. The sounds are working. There we go. One thing I noticed we didn't add is the music. There we go. Let's add the music actually while we're at it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna create a new um, a new uh, object. So game object. I'm gonna create an empty prod object. Call it music. Simple stuff. I'm just gonna add the components. Call it audio source. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. In this case, we do want it to play on awake and we also want it to loop, right? So volume is gonna go get down because in platformers, it's it's not common for music to be too loud. Well, to be fair, it can be. Mario part. Mario is just a big example. And now we wait. The music should be playing on the in the actual uh, title scene or menu. There we go, music's playing. We got start, we have exit. Not feel like shot. Better. There we go. We have our music. Let's just make sure that it loops. Please uh, ignore my really bad sound design. That was very rapid. All right. I'm just waiting for it to reload. Let's make sure that it loops correctly. I cannot die, actually. There we go, and it loops again. Beautiful. So we have the music. We have the jumps, we have the shootings. What else we need? Maybe dying. Maybe the, the player does respawn, right? So let's work on that. And it's the exact same principle. So overall, it's just the same code over and over again. So let's just go back, add another audio source. I'm just gonna collapse this little guy right here. And I think once we add maybe the death sound, we can call it a day for now. And then I can add, I can show you the rest that I couldn't show before due to technical difficulties. Audio sucks. I wanted to cut it. No, it is okay. I want the player. We have can actually do two player hurts, not play on awake, and one for player death. Hold on, let me just go back here. There we go. Let's call this player death, not play on awake. I'm gonna reduce the volume because I know how loud it is maybe to like this or something. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go to player controller or which it's gonna be a player controller. That script right here. It's an endless loop uh, a lot of dying because I can't die because I have two scenes open. So it's just suffering forever. So here we have the overall uh, script of the player. Let's just make sure we have take damage. We have both things we want, perfect. First things first, we know this. Copy paste. <laughs> Let's say uh, layer hurts SFX and another one for layer death SFX. Cool? Cool. So over here, you have to take damage. There's two different things. Either you take damage and you're still alive or take damage and health is equal or below zero, then you die, right? So if we just have takes damage, right? Health, okay. We're just gonna go here and write player hurts SFX dot play. All right, and for the death one, we're gonna write, make sure you do, uh, you write it before this because 
a sound can't play once the character dies, right? So um, player death sfx dot play. All right, command save. Hopefully this is the right way to do. So now we should have two new bowls or two new options for us to include our music. How great is that? So far, again, it's very basic implementation. That's the word I was looking for before, implementation. So these are very simple implementation. In the player controller, we have hurt and death SFX. We have, this is the hurt, I believe. Yes, so I'm gonna drag this. It's gonna start collapsing things. That's way too many things all at once. There we go. That's the hurt. I'm gonna put it to hurt. If it would allow me, there we go. And the death, I'm gonna put it to death. Cool, cool. Let's see if that works. Once again, drum roll. Now I'm just gonna do the drum roll. Whilst I appreciate it, I think too many drum rolls at once can, can hurt our ears. And now we wait for the game to start. Make them from Sorry, okay. Oh, right, right. He can't die right now. All right, I completely forgot. That's another thing. If both menus are open, both uh, scenes are open, the character cannot die. And you want him to die. So uh, remove scene. I'm going to save it. Main menu. Just going to This is because the main menu is the first thing you see, right? So that allows the game to progress. And then we wait again. Sorry, folks. A lot of waiting for this workshop, huh? Compared to the previous one. Before it was just a slide with like some piano, which reminded me like there's a thing, so it's easier that way, but this is more hands-on. So starts, you have a shooting, you have a jump. All right, Beetle. Ah, we got the sound effect. What happens if he dies? Come back. There we go. Now we respawn, you have the death, you have the hurt sound effect. Yeah, it's basically it, right? <laughs> Done. I think those would be the main sound effects we can implement. There's more things um, that, for example, because the game is not complete, there's some codes that I have to add. In that case, I'll have to reach the programmer, right? Because I don't know to ask them what I can do or hours and hours of research on YouTube. Uh, but essentially, those are the main ones. You have jump, you have shoot, you have hurt, you have die, and you have music for so far for this game. And because it's not complete, we can. I, I tried to add the um, into the animation the uh, the walking, the, the enemy walk. You can also add it to the player, but I realized it it, it doesn't stop. And again, it's something with the coding we need to change. In that case, ask your programmer, folks. It's the best way to do it. Uh, but I think for a platformer, those will be the main things. As long as you have music, you have the shoots, you have the uh, shoots, you have the shooting, you have the jump. You have the uh, hurt, death. It would be nice to have a sound like a sound effect for enemies dying. Just make it subtle. Because I thought they were robots, I called it. It they sound like robotic. Make it like a robot like breaking. Uh, turns out they're beetles. I did not know. I'm sorry. And this is the moving one. I wanted like whenever they move, you hear a little. So. Uh, because again, because in the code, because I could not implement this in this specific game, um, we just I just called it for the sound effects we have so far. Uh, but that's basically it for implementation. I'll check what what was wrong with the um, with the UI because I really like the UI. I think it's my probably my favorite thing to to sound design. And I'll screen record it, add it to that YouTube video, so it's all in one video. And yeah. So far, do you have any questions? I think it's gonna be it for today. Do you have any questions? Anything else that you guys have questions for? It was a long, it was it was a very hectic uh, workshop. I apologize, but overall, everything seems okay. Do you have any questions? Anything else you need to know about? <laughs> awesome, perfect. So if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach me. Um, I don't think that slide fell here. Hold on. My information's here. So if you have any questions, that's my email, Instagram. And um, I think for, for Discord, you can find me as kids with like misfits, just like Sasha said the last time. 
But yeah, so if you have any questions, please don't just reach me, okay? In that case, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop the share. Here we are back again at Zoom. Mika Misfits in the server. There we go. I'll just copy paste it. No, no, no. So in the server, it's Mika Misfits. Overall, it's just Mika's music. And yes, perfect. Thank you. If you have no questions, thank you everyone for coming. I hope you learned something at least with all the technical difficulties. And uh, yeah, before the YouTube goes, the video goes on YouTube, I'll make sure that it has all the things you missed. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Sash, any last words? Anything you want to say? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mika. This was great. <laughs> it was a hell. It was a roller coaster over here. I mean, unity, you know, and Zoom.